So the first thing that we have to do is we have to create a folder and create a project. I'm going to bring this over a little bit more so that we can see the model tree here. And so I'm going to create a project and I'm going to create a folder on the fly in the project's uh, creation. Project, new at the bottom, single user, next, and we're going to call this butterfly valve. Now the project workspace folder is not correct, so I'm going to hit this browser button and I'm going to go to this PC and I'm going to go to my Google Drive file stream and I'm going to dig down to my 1433 folder. Underneath there we have all the rest of our project folders and I'm going to create one right underneath 1433. So if you wanted to click on make new folder, make sure you have your 1433 main folder highlighted and you can right click to the right of that or you can click on make new folder and it puts it right underneath there. So I'm going to call it butterfly valve and notice that that does not change down here. I'm going to hit enter and now it's there. So you have to type it in and hit enter and now it's there. Make sure that's highlighted and say okay. And then we're going to verify right here that that's correct. I'm going to finish this and if I don't have anything open, it pops that to be my active project. I'm going to say done. And I always verify over here if that's my active project. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new part. These are inch parts. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to project geometry. So I'm going to expand my origin folder, project geometry of the X, the first two planes. Now, something about this that I'm going to show you a trick on is that I'm going to create this cylinder first. And when I create this cylinder, I'm going to create it symmetrically. And I'm looking at this and I'm going to do that because I can mirror these ears. They're round with a hole in it. I'm going to mirror these ears from the top to the bottom. So I've, if I extrude these, this cylinder symmetrically, it leaves my XY sketching plane right in the middle so that I can mirror those later. And that's exactly why I do that. The other thing that I notice is that I could pattern multiple features here. Now, I'm going to show you guys something. It says all fillets and rounds are a radius of 0.063. So can you see where all the fillets and rounds are? It's hard to see. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's also hard to put a quantity on this. So let's go ahead and get started with our cylinder. I'm going to draw two of these circles. The interior diameter or ID is 1.938 and it's defaulting to a radius. You see that? So I'm going to right click and go to diameter 1.938. I'm going to draw another one and it stays in the same command at 2.812. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit E for extrude. And right now is where, do you see that I'm on my XY plane right here on my sketching plane. We said that this is going to be my sketching plane for all my new sketches. So I want to extrude this symmetrically. And I'm going to put in the overall height over here of 2.25. So I've got these two numbers in already. I'm going to extrude this the overall distance of 2.25. I don't have to think about what half of that is. 2.25, and I have to select that. So if I select on the circles, you notice that it's wanting to select the entire thing. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude symmetrically. 2.25, and I'm going to select these four quadrants. It wasn't letting me select an inside one. 
So you can see that at 2.25, it's equidistant on both sides. And I'm going to say OK. Now, is that my optimum position for my home view? No, it's not. So if you want to grab a good orientation for your home view, you can um, move this around. I'm going to go back to the home view here. And if I just selected, let's say, on this edge and then just kind of went to a corner of that, just go to a three-sided corner where this cylinder is straight up and down. And I'm going to right-click on this and set current view to home and fit to view. And that gives me this orientation. All right. Now, the thing that... Um, when we bring in a view, it's going to bring it in on our front view. So is this my front view? No. It's going to bring it in on my front view, which looks like this. So that may not be the primary. You know, when we bring in our primary view, it wants to give us the front view first. So if I want to make this my front view, I can right-click on the Home button and set current view to front. So that's the front. This is the top. And if I go to my isometric view, this is the, the left. ISO left is the front, and this is the top. may not be important to you guys, but sometimes I like to set it up that way. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one of these ears. So let's move over here a little bit. And I'm going to hit Escape so that I can drag this over. So I see that I have six holes. I have three on the bottom, on the top, and three on the bottom. And then I have six radii of 0 0.50. And then I have fillets all the way around it. Now let me show you where those are. They go up the side, around the body. So this strengthens this ear to the body. It goes all the way around where it connects to the body. And then on the inside, and you never want to have a fillet on the ceiling surface here because you want as much ceiling surface as possible. Now, you're always, when you machine something, you're always going to knock off the sharp edges. But notice that we don't have a fillet on those edges. So I'm going to select on this top view, and I'm going to create a sketch. Now, I'm going to draw this uh, full ear and the hole, I'm not going to put a hole in it. Now, you can put a hole if you want to concentric, but I'm going to draw that hole as an extrusion here as if it was all machined, not drilled as a hole with a certain size end mill of 0.5. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. And this is kind of important. I need to project geometry of at least that northern quadrant because notice this. I have one on the northern quadrant. If we come back over here, I have one on the northern quadrant, but I don't have another one on an east-west or south quadrant. So I'm going to start with that northern quadrant, and I'm projecting the north, you know, the vertical axis because I have to line the hole up on that. So when I say that I have things, the hole and the radius seem to be located at the same place, and that is on a diameter 3.5 circle. So I'm going to draw a circle here with a diameter of 3.5. Do you remember that uh, we were talking about center lines and I said something about construction lines? Construction lines will never extrude. And am I ever going to extrude anything from that 3.5 circle? This is a location circle. So I want to show you how, if I make this construction, how it makes it different. But first, I'm going to draw a rectangle for the body of this because it's not circular all the way to the face. So rectangle, and I'm selecting just on one side here. And then the other side. What happened to my rectangle? It just was flat. So I've got to go to the upper right-hand portion. So if that's a radius of 0.5, what's the diameter of that or the width of that ear? That will be one inch. 
Now, if I have a radius of 0.5 and this is one inch, then what is, you know, how is this centered around that? Do you guys remember that if both of the X and both of these points across are both on this circle, that they will be equally disposed to both sides? So if I just grab this and move this over, you see how that would make that kind of equally disposed. So it doesn't know where it is yet, but if I put a coincident constraint here on this as well, it knows where this line is because this point is connected to the circle, this point is connected to the circle, and it knows that this is the same distance from here as this is. Because if I have a horizontal line here and both of these points are on here, then they're going to be equally disposed around that center axis. So I have a width of one. Now let's draw our diameter for our radius. I'm going to draw a circle. And I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to let it be a diameter one. And I'm going to put a radius on here. I'm going to take this out, this width. And I'm going to put a dimension on here as a radius. Dimension type, radius. Before I set it down, 0.5. Now it knows where this is. But why doesn't it know where this is? It doesn't know that this is tangent to this or even on this point. It just knows that this point is on here. So let's say that I delete this. And I'm going to, I usually don't trim these things out, but when you have a lot of extra geometry, it's hard to grab all this stuff to extrude at one time. So if I put this center point and make it coincident, I'm going to use a coincident constraint. So I'm going to hover over that so that you can see it. That's a coincident constraint. It's just that point. So I'm going to put this point on this bolt circle. Notice that this is not tangent. So I'm going to make this tangent. I'm going to use a tangent constraint from this arc to this and this arc to this. Did you notice that that thing jumped off left and right? But now it knows exactly where it is because this is equally disposed on both sides and vertical. So now that's completely constrained. Do I need to delete this? No. I can extrude straight through, or I could delete it and use this projected geometry. Now, if I draw a circle here, I'm going to draw a diameter of 0.47. Okay, so now let's see what it looks like if I extrude this. If I go to extrude this, notice that I have all these quadrants. So I'm going to hit escape and go back to my sketch. If I make this construction, it's not going to change anything. Everything is still attached to it, but it's just used for construction. So now if I go and try and extrude, do you notice that it picks up two different boundaries? Or if I select this, it's a whole outside. If I select this, it's a whole inside. I'm going to escape again. If I make my vertical projected geometry construction, it's still there and everything's still attached. If I extrude now, it picks up the whole thing. So do you see how... Using a construction line sometimes is nice because it doesn't try and pick it up as geometry. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to extrude the opposite direction. And the thickness of all these is, now I'm going to use this highlighter over here, 0.313. So I have my hole size, I have my radius size, and 0.313. When you see a dimension come from the inside out, I don't care if you put it on there like 
in the drawing like we do in 1405. We were trying to teach you guys how to change dimension styles. Either way is okay in the ASME standard. So I'm going to go a distance of 0 0.313. And I'm going to say okay. Now let's take a look at it. And let's look at it from this side. So you can see that it's solid all the way through. And if it didn't make it solid all the way through, it would have two separate solids. And if you go up to solid bodies, you would see more than one solid body here. It's all one solid. Now I'm going to put in some fillets on this because I don't want to put fillets on all six of these. I want to pattern the fillets and the extrusion at the same time. So I'm going to put in the fillets and the fillets. If I go over here and hit escape, I'm going to drag this over. The fillets and rounds are 0 0.063, if you guys see this right here. And there are a couple more places that our fillets and rounds are 0 0.063. So I have them on my ears. And I have one right here that strengthens this cylinder to the other cylinder. And then if we go over to the back of this part, uh-oh. If we go over to the back of this part, you're going to see that we have another cylinder. And here is the other fillet. So everybody always forgets these two. We're not. So let's just remember that. I'm going to use a fillet right now. I'm going to have two different fillet features because there are two different points in time. I'm going to have one here, here, and here. So how many fillets is that? We would think it's three. But what if I used a fillet? 0.063. What if I put it here? And then I say, okay. And then I put another fillet right here because this is a tangent chain. That's all one fillet. So this is where the quantities are a little bit funky. So let's go back to this fillet. And I'm going to go ahead and select the other edges so that I have them all in one feature. So we might have one, two, three, four, five fillets, but is this a fillet and this a fillet and this a fillet? I don't know. This is one continuous round tangent edge. So like a rolling ball. Okay, so we have that one done and we'll say okay. And you see how that smooths out around the corners. So I have these fillets done. Let's turn this around a little bit. And we have fillets on not the ceiling side. I don't want any fillets here. I want them on the underside of the parts to knock off the edges. And these fillets actually strengthen. When it adds material, it strengthens. When it takes away material, it's knocking off an edge. So I'm going to go to my home view now. Now I have that first one. Now I'm going to take the fillet and this extrusion. I'm going to hold down control and gather both of them. And then I'm going to make a circular pattern of that. When it asks for an axis, you want to select the inside of the cylinder or the outside of the cylinder, and it will find the axis. And we want three of those in 360 degrees. So now let's make sure that we got all of our fillets on all three. You remember how when we first did this and we mirrored something, it didn't put the fillets all the, on the other side? I'm always wary of that whenever I pattern or mirror something. So check that out. All right. <clears throat> so let's see what we've got so far. We've got our fillets and we have our holes. We have these done. And now I'm ready to make these three ears on the bottom of the part. We've got our 0.313 that's showing that they're the same on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to grab this circular pattern. Notice that the pattern is independent of the features. So I'm going to grab the pattern, the pattern features and the original features. And then I'm going to mirror those. The XY plane is what I started sketching on it. And if I go to, let's say, this front view, it's right in the middle because I extruded symmetrically. 
So I have everything that I want to mirror the circular pattern, the original fillet and the extrusion. And I'm going to grab in the pattern area, the mirror command. And it's already set to be on the mirror plane because I, um, I pre-selected those, so it pops right to the mirror plane. Always click on this if you select the features um, after the, let me show you what I mean. If I say mirror, and then I select my features, I have to click on the mirror plane button, or it will try and mirror the plane that we select as a feature. So now I have all six, and I'll say OK. Make sure all those fillets made. It looks like they made just fine. So now I'm going to save this part as body. And then we'll start from there. 